Hey, it's Nathan with Crazy Eye Marketing. In this video, we're gonna discuss installing the Facebook Pixel on your ClickFunnels funnels. Now, if you don't know what a Facebook Pixel is or what standard events are, I suggest you go watch the previous video to this one. I'll link to it down below or there might be a link on this video somewhere. So check that out first if you don't know what a Pixel or standard events are. And we're just gonna dive straight into it. So let's go ahead and kind of plan out our standard events first and then we'll go over to click funnels and actually install them on the funnel so this is what our funnel looks like in click funnels we got a squeeze page a welcome and pre-sale page an order form slash sales page so it does both things it's a one page sales page order form go straight into a one-time offer if they say no they'll they'll see the down sell and whether they say yes or no to the down sell they'll go to oto number two also if they say yes to oto one they'll go straight to oto oto number two and then they land on our order confirmation page. So that's our funnel. You can see it right here, squeeze page, welcome and pre-sell, sales page slash order form, OTO one, down sell, OTO two, order confirmation. And then we got some extra pages going on here, but we don't need to think about those for this example, just showing you the layout of the funnel real quick. So let's go ahead and use this thing right here, uh, this tab thing to kind of figure out what standard events we want to go ahead and install on our funnel. Now remember, events trigger when somebody lands on a specific page or you can also connect it to a click and i'll kind of show you that in this video so you see how that can function uh, so let's walk through each page of our funnel and decide what we should count or what event should trigger based off of what pages somebody should land on now obviously your funnel might be different but you can follow the same principles and guidelines to kind of map out your funnel so the first page we have is a squeeze page. And if somebody lands on this page, there's not really any event going on. They just landed on our page, so nothing super significant here, right? So no, no big deal there. Now, if they land on our welcome and pre-sale page, the only way they're gonna get to this page is if they opt in to our squeeze page and they become a lead, right? So they opt in, land on this page, they're a lead. So let me actually make this a lead uh, standard event. Let me make this font a little bit bigger. Lead. So we'll count this. People land on this page. Oh, let's bring you to the front. Okay, there we go. We will count these people that land on this page as a lead. Sounds good, right? So if they then on this welcome and pre-sale page, we'll have a button that takes them over to the order form and sales page here. So if they click that button and they land on our order form and sales page, uh, what does that mean? So there's a couple of ways you can think about this. Personally, I label all of my sales pages and important pages as view content standard events. Uh, this, the view content standard event is used to like basically tell Facebook that this page is significant. Now there's not like something, no action necessarily applied with it, but they looked at something important. And so I typically add this to product or order form pages because that's like an important page. Like somebody's like kind of getting close to checking out and buying something. So that's important. It's more more important than say a looking at a blog post or watching a video on your website or something like that. So if they land on an order form or sales page. I want to count that as a view content event. View content. Now also on this order form and sales page, I have a two-step order form. Let me go pop this up real quick so you know what I'm talking about. If you've used ClickFunnels, you likely know what a two-step order form is, but if not, here's a quick example. So this is the two-step order form. You fill out step one here, you hit to go to step two, and they're shown the price, and then they can enter their payment information and check out. So when they go to step two here, this information actually gets sent into ClickFunnels, and you could send it somewhere else using a tool like Zapier if you wanted to, uh, or you can issue like a card abandonment series. But basically, if somebody fills out this form, they enter their name, email, and shipping information, and hit go to step two, I'd wanna count that as an add to cart. Like, they've, ob they've obviously started the process of checking out, they've entered their contact information, they've hit go to step two, that should count as an add to cart, right? Uh, so, also on this page, we'll have an add to cart event, add to cart, so, and that'll trigger if they go to step two of our two-step order form. Now, if you're not using a two-step order form and you have another order form or something along those lines, like you might have a sales page and that'll link over to an order form, 
So then on that order form page, you would have your add to cart button. Now, whatever the very last step up until them entering their payment information should likely be your add to cart event. So that way you can kind of track how many people are actually like so close to checking out. So you want to track that as much as possible. So we got our add to cart event. All right, so if they add a product to cart, they check out, they land on OTO number one. So what type of event would happen here if they land on OTO number one? Well, that would be a purchase event, right? They purchased whatever we have on our order form or sales page here. So we'll go ahead and create this as a purchase event. So they land on this page means that they bought whatever was on this page, right? So purchase event triggered here when I land on OTO number one. All right, now this is gonna be kind of like a pop quiz here. So if somebody lands on OTO number two, does that mean that they have purchased anything? Well, they did purchase at least something on the order form because they needed to get over here, but does landing on OTO two mean that they purchased OTO one? No, not necessarily, because they could say no to OTO one, pop down to downsell one, and say no here, and they're still gonna come up to OTO two. So some percent of the population will have made a purchase, but another percent of the population will not have made a purchase. So you don't wanna stick a purchase event on OTO number two page because you don't know if they purchased or not. So that's one of the downsides of ClickFunnels here. They don't do a good job of integrating with the Facebook pixel. Now I'll shoot another video that can give you more precise information. It's still not perfect, but it's better than what we have right here. Uh, so unfortunately, the only purchase event you're gonna to wanna to track on your funnel is if they buy the initial offer. So that's the only purchase event that you're gonna to wanna to track because you don't know if they've bought or not bought when they go to downsell one or OTO two, right? You, you just don't know that information. So we can track this initial offer and that's the best we can do. It still gives Facebook data. It's still gonna find buyers and it's still going to help auto 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 optimize your campaigns, ad sets and ads. So it's still awesome, still good data. You still want it, but it's not perfect because you're not getting everything. All right, I think that I beat that horse enough. Let's move on. So order confirmation page. Well, if they land on the order confirmation page, that means that, yeah, they've purchased something as well because um, that's the only way to get here. But we don't know what they purchased. They might've just purchased this initial offer product and said no to everything else and then landed here, or they might've bought you know, two things or one thing, we don't know. So um, you could place the purchase pixel right here at the end, as opposed to OTO number one, but then you might miss out on some people because some people might land on OTO one and then close their browser or go somewhere else for whatever reason. They might not realize that it's an OTO option, so they might not get to the order confirmation page. So you'd miss out on that conversion event happening, uh, but it could, technically function. But the best place to pay, to place your purchase standard event is on your OTO one page. And then nothing on your order confirmation page. All right, so this is what this funnel standard events will look like. Now let's go ahead and actually add the pixel and these events to our funnel. So let's head over to Facebook real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pixel. Yeah, again, if you don't know what you're looking at here, go watch that first video where I describe the Facebook pixel and show you how to find it. Because uh, you're gonna need to know that in order to install it. So we're gonna manually install our code. All right, and then we have our pixel code right here, block number two. And we wanna go over to our funnel. And we're gonna want to go to the funnel level settings, which is in the blue row up at the top, it says settings. And we wanna go to head tracking code right here. And we wanna paste our Facebook pixel right here in the head of our funnel. So that's what it looks like right there. Uh, anything you paste in the head of your funnel level settings will automatically go onto any page on your funnel. So this code will show up on all the pages in this funnel. So that's how you install the Facebook pixel across your entire funnel all in one, one swoop here. So we pasted the code, scroll on down here, Make sure you hit save and update settings. All right, so our pixel is now installed on our funnel. So awesome. Now let's go ahead and mess with our standard events. Come back over to Facebook pixel, hit continue. And now we're looking at our events to track. So the first event we wanna do is a lead event. 
they land on our welcome and pre-sale page. So let's flip the little switch here. We have our snippet here. Let's go ahead and copy it to clipboard. Let me close that page real quick. Let me load up the welcome and pre-sale page. Hit edit page. And ignore what it looks like. That's not what's important here. But what we want to do is go to settings and we want to go to tracking code and we want to click the footer code option and we want to paste that little lead snippet here. So this snippet plus the Facebook pixel code that we installed across our whole funnel is going to signal to Facebook that anybody landing on this page is a lead. And then we can optimize our campaigns, ad sets and ads with that information, track stats, all that type of stuff. So it's really important stuff to know. And that's all you gotta do is paste that in here, close it out, hit save, I'll name your page, save, all right, back out. All right, the next pixel we wanna go ahead and install is view content. And we're doing that on our order form page. So let's go to sales page slash order form page, edit this page. And we want to go to settings again and tracking code and footer code. And let's go ahead and open up the view content event. And we want to go ahead and select this snippet of code. And oh, I already have code going on in that one. All right, I'll delete that out. So we got our view content event now on this page. And we also wanted to add an add to cart event that triggers when somebody presses that go to step two option on our two step order form. And to do that, I have a little snippet of code here, custom JavaScript code that basically sends the add to cart standard event to Facebook when somebody clicks on this link right here. So the submit form two step. So that button that takes them to step two uh, will trigger the add to cart event. That's what this code is saying here. So we want to copy this code and I'll have this code down below this video so you can use this code right here because it is special. Facebook doesn't give it to you. Uh, well, let's go back over here and we're just going to paste our add to cart special code right below the view content snippet. So it looks just like this right here. And we go ahead and close this page or close that section hit save and escape or exit. And we got one more standard event to go ahead and add, which is our purchase event. So let's go ahead and we'll close that real quick, open up the purchase event. Now with purchases and with the other events as well, for that matter, you can go ahead and assign event parameters. So like value and currency, and you could also add other parameters that might be important. And so with purchases, you might know the value of what somebody's buying. Now, if you have several products on your order form, you might not know which variation of the product they're gonna buy, what, how much they're gonna spend. So you'd probably want to assign the average order value as your value here. Uh, just you know, take the total number of orders and divide the revenue by that to get your, your purchase value, your average value. Uh, but let's just say I'm selling one product on my order form page, it's seven bucks. So I could just do $7 conversion value and then con currency USD for United States dollars. Copy this code to the clipboard, come back over to ClickFunnels, open up my OTO number one page, edit this page. And we'll go to settings and tracking code, footer code, and I got some code in there. I'll wipe it out real quick and paste in my purchase code. So this is my purchase code and you know seven dollars when somebody lands on this page it tells Facebook like this person just spent seven bucks on my website. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can do stuff with lifetime value and things of that nature if you tell Facebook how much people are spending. So assigning a value to things is quite important and so that's that's it for this code. Close this out, save it, and we'll backspace out of here. And now real quick, let's go ahead and just test our pixels, see if they're firing correctly. So let me load up my welcome and pre-sale page. Let me just pop this page up real quick. And I have the Facebook Pixel Helper Chrome extension installed on my browser here. 
I'll have a link to it down below as well, but it's this right here. You click on it and it lets us know what standard events are firing on our page. And it also lets us know what Facebook pixels installed. So you can see here, my, this is my Facebook pixel and the page view event trigger, which is the standard event that triggers on all pages. It's just somebody uh, viewing a page. And then the lead event also triggered successfully. You see, I got that green circle here. So that's exactly what I wanted to have happen when somebody lands on my welcome and pre-sale page. So that looks good. Let me go to my order form page and pop this up real quick. And let's check out the Facebook pixel helper. We got the page view event going on. We got the view content event going on, which remember is that special event that I installed on this page. And you also can see that the add to cart event has a red uh, error message. And that's because we haven't clicked go to step two yet. So let me actually click this real quick. All right, so I clicked go to step two. I'm gonna pop this open. And now you see that the add to cart event has triggered correctly. So that sent the signal up to Facebook and now they know that, hey, somebody added the product to their cart. So that's working correctly, awesome. And we got one last event to check out, which is our purchase event on OTO one page. So let's pop that up real quick. And let's click on our pixel helper. And we got our page view event, which is on every page. And then we have a purchase event, which has a green circle. That's good. Let's see what it says. So value seven currency USD. So looks like our pixels are properly installed or it looks like our pixel and standard events are properly installed uh, across our funnel here. So things are good to go. And now Facebook can keep track of how people are going through our funnel and what events are triggering. And that'll help us optimize our campaigns, ad sets and ads and create audiences and all sorts of good stuff. So that's how you go ahead and install the Facebook pixel on your ClickFunnels funnel.